We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? Welcome to O'Reilly Radio 146, recorded Saturday, February 25th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your entertainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, well, really. I'm your host, Andy Cowan, and I have Daniel Atherton and Amber Besecker with me, and we're here to discuss the law and order. Uh, should you uh, find mistakes, we would like them corrected. So please, if you do find anything like that, or you just have comments and questions and obviously concerns, because everything that we talk about here is concerning, go ahead and email us at oreallyradiopodcast at gmail.com or phone it in at 470-222-6759. All right, let's see. So things that we've dug up this week. Uh, let's see. Who filled this out? I think you, I think you put most of this in here, so I'm going to let you run the run this show. Go All ahead. All right. So uh, I was I was asked to try and find ways to to show that it's not just here in the states where everything is going to pieces. So here's the world news. It's not good. <laughs> um, in, in somewhat of a scandalous bright side, Scan- over in France okay. are least favorite uh, leader of the French right, uh, Marine Le Pen, has refused a police interview about uh, her, her, her party's alleged misuse of EU funds. Alleged. Alleged. Okay. Um, no, th- there's more than 300,000 euros which is roughly 321,000 USD um, was misspent by Ms. Le Pen's National Front Party. Um, when confronted by BBC reporters, she said she will not respond, respond to the summons during her election campaign. Uh, <laughs> during this surprised. period, there cannot be the neutrality or calm necessary for the justice system to function properly. Yeah, I'm sure that's her concern. Oh, of course, that's totally the concern. Yeah. Um, There are a a number of members within her party who have been fingered already. uh, (laughs) Oh, I bet. (laughs) Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That's so in... in For this, um, a a European Parliament... As a European member of Parliament, Ms. Le Pen was allocated the money for costs on condition that the work was carried out in Brussels or Strasbourg. However, okay. it is alleged the money went largely to pay for the salary of a Ms. Grisette, who spent most of the time in the uh, National Front headquarters in Paris, which would be a clear violation. Hmm. Uh, Ms. Grisette, as it goes further, is a close personal friend of Ms. Le Pen, as well as her cabinet director. Uh, Ms. Le Pen's bodyguard, uh, Thierry Ligier, uh, was also detained on Wednesday, but later released. Uh Uh-huh. A deadline to repay the money elapsed at the end of January. So probably had the money been repaid, we wouldn't be hearing a single word about this. But look, it's another right winger that doesn't pay their debts. Hmm. I have a picture here of uh, Marie Le Pen. Up, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a good picture. <laughs> yeah. It says it says many things. Hmm. Elapsed in January. So, yeah, had had she just done the bookkeeping. Yeah, there wouldn't have been a need for a scandal, really. And, and even before that, had she just spent the money appropriately, there would not have been a scandal. Oh yeah, but, but who she does spent that? The, the the money inappropriately, and then when caught, refused to pay back the money. If she wins, she promises a Brexit-style referendum on France's membership of the EU. Yep. It, it, we're seeing more and more of of these right wing populists pop out throughout the West, nationalism, and, and not not only the West, but we're we're seeing it globally. Just period. Yeah. Uh, now there, since David's not here, I will put on the tinfoil hat. You uh, can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> but 
it, there there is is talk, and as we're seeing more and more concern over Brexit, actually Brexit investigations and uh, inv- investigations in other European nations' elections with Russian interference, that Russia is making a huge play right now to disrupt the West in in, in hopes of becoming the new hegemon. Mm-hmm. And leaping ahead of China, since right now they, they they are not suffering too much of the pains of the resource curse. Um, the resource curse being that most of Russia's money is in oil. Globally, we are moving away from that. Um, a good part of the EU is, as we'll we'll cover later, is discussing how to move away from carbon-based energy without significantly harming the populace, without really harming those jobs or being able to transition those jobs. Right. So We we discussed it uh, on the last show, but uh, hedge money, which is one one of those key words that you're going to hear an awful lot in 2017— is not just 2017s. It's probably yeah. going to carry all the way through to 2020, folks. You're yeah. going to be hearing this a lot. Yeah, definitely in the near future. So you know, bone up on your on your political uh, lexicon here. So leadership or dominance, especially by one country or social group over others. So that's yeah. In, and that's um, why Russia wants to destabilize the West. They, right. they they see weakness within America. They also see that right now they have they are at probably what they're going to be the strongest economically. That's part of the reason why they want the sanctions lifted. Mm-hmm. So they're making their play. They are trying to leap ahead of China because that's as as the West crumbles, China's right there to get it all. Yeah. They're really in place to be the economic and military leader. They may not have the, the, the cultural cachet yet, but we've already been seeing plays by agents of China with that freaking Great Wall picture, which, yeah, it looks like a white savior film, that, but it was made by Legendary and, and Associates, and it was made in China. If you look at it with a critical eye, it's a Chinese cultural propaganda film that uses the mm-hmm. white savior trope to make it more palatable to the West. Yeah. Now, of course, we, we also have to look. The population of the United States is roughly 330 million. Yeah. What is the population of China? Uh, I think at more. least a billion people. Hang on. Hang on. I, I have a new toy. This is the, the Google Home product. So Hello, Google say. Home. Oh, hang on. Hey, Google. How many people live in China? The population of China was 1.357 billion in 2013. They was. have they have a billion more people than we do. Yeah. More, not just they have a billion people. They have a billion more people than we oh. do. Yeah, um, I I was looking at some of the later numbers. Uh, 2016 puts it at 1.38 from 1.35. And they did remove that whole restriction on only one child per family, right? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it generally... That was laxed. It looks like... Roll out. Generally, the yearly percentage change of the population is about half a percent. That's a lot, and mm-hmm. that's probably why, if you're wearing a tinfoil hat, Russia is jumping at the gun right now because they know they don't have a lot of time to make the end run around China. Let's see here. Hey, Google, what's the population of Russia? The population of Russia was 143.5 million in 2013. So they have half the number of people that we do. Yeah. But they're essentially a an oligarchic dictatorship yeah but that's also similar to well it's not really similar but it's it's not a democracy they're making an end run yeah it's no. it's not a democracy even though it has a lot of the earmarkings thereof um 
so they can be more efficient. Yeah. And that's why I'm 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 munching on the tinfoil right they're, now. They're they're capitalist. We Kristen on Facebook was uh, had something interesting to say. Oh. She's saying that the Russian Navy is uh, nothing more than rust buckets. Several of their nuclear subs aren't even seaworthy. They're so badly neglected. Instead, the Russian government connected the sub to power grids to power the cities. They just sit moored to the pier at all times. Yeah, wow. Again, they, 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 though, again concentration of wealth, wealth distribution. Um, and the, right now, the war that's going on is economic and cultural. Mm -hmm. Is perception, perception right now in 2017, is reality. Nine tenths of reality. <laughs> perception so, is nine tenths of reality. I like that. Yeah, that's about true too. At least here in the West. Well, if you if you want your mind blown, there was this whole study done on how reality only exists the way we perceive it to. So. Uh, solipsism is not good. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, if we are. In that whole um, Elon Musk simulation thing, then whose perception in the, in are the framework? whose perception are we living in? Well, that's a whole different. Yeah. It, oh, if we get into that philosophical bend, we're uh, we're doomed. Pack of dicks. I don't we're, know. We're, we're we're gone. We're yeah. just gone. It's like yeah. So let's talk. So, let's talk about something more cheerful, like Duarte. Uh, speaking <laughs> of uh, popular demagogues. Um, so, Duarte, uh, who is currently the president of the Philippines, uh, his top critic was just arrested on a drug charge. Uh, the, the drug charge stemming from uh, drug kingpins who are already imprisoned, funneling money to her office specifically. Hmm. Huh. Really? Yeah. Um, she <laughs> actually, for fear, uh, spent an entire night in the Senate. That's funny, yeah. In Manila was, to evade arrest. I was reading that right here. But, wow. Uh, but on Friday, she surrendered to the police, uh, saying, it is my honor to be in prison for the things I am fighting for. Um, but mm. uh, Duarte's War on Drugs, which has claimed... More than seven thousand people already, and that's a rough estimate, folks. Um, the nationwide drug war has has pretty much propped up. Hi, hmm. you want to be a vigilante and just kill a suspect? Well, you're fine. There's not going to be criminal prosecution towards you because they were obviously part of the drug problem. Yeah. So vigilante justice is is okay by Duarte as long as they're killing the people that are already on his list. Yeah, um, in, and even, uh, on his list in as, any way, or they're not important enough to be investigated. Yeah, not important enough to care. Mm. Uh, no, th this this is really not good and something that we need to keep an eye on. Uh, as the Philippines have, during while Obama was still in office, Duarte was essentially almost what was it every every two weeks coming out and saying something negative about the U.S. Mm, yeah, um, yeah but pretty... now with 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 Trump in office, that's quieted down. We haven't heard him, you know, going off the handle against the U.S., but we haven't heard anything positive either. It's because he probably agrees with the things that Trump is doing, and that's scary. Yeah, it's like oh, I don't now. Nah, I don't need to say anything about that. That's cool. Great. So, th yeah. this is just something to keep your eyes on, folks. Again, we are part of a global community, and right now that community is being headed up by a lot of unsavory folks. Yes. Hmm. When op when opposition is just spontaneously being charged with crimes. Well, this isn't exactly spontaneous. Duarte had uh, had the senator in his sights for a long time, says the article. As yeah. head of the Human Rights Commission, she launched an inquiry against Duarte's alleged involvement in death squads in Davo, uh, where he was the mayor. So he's been he's been killing people with death squads for a long time. Um, 
and she led the, the Senate hearings into the extrajudicial killings. So, yeah, she's the direct opposition. Yep. Duarte then called her an immoral woman and accused her of um, accused her of involvement in the drug trade using her driver, whom she had been having an affair with. <laughs> yeah, the crazy's not just here, folks. Oh, she accused him of being a serial killer. Nice. Wow. Nice. Let's up the ante there a little bit. Well, you're having an affair with your driver. It, it, oh, yeah. Well, you're a serial killer. <laughs> it, it, it has. Again, these are a lot of just allegations flying left and right. But yeah. con- considering his his own purported bloodlust, it, it has been rumored for some time that he has taken part in murder. At the very least, he's a, a mass murderer. He sanctions murder. Yes, he sanctions murder. Kind of like how um, Al Capone never hurt a fly. But he had a lot of bug zappers installed. Yeah. That kind of thing. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, moving on to other let's uh let's more... bring it back here to the United States. Uh, yeah. Deal with uh, deal with a few things here. Federal agents ask domestic flight passengers to show IDs. Mhm. Uh... Yep. This, this is... is a New York airport one. Yep. Uh, U.S. Customs and Border Protection confirmed Thursday that their agents requested to see the identification of domestic flight passengers landing at a New York airport Wednesday night as they searched for an immigrant who had received a deportation order to leave the U.S. According to the agency, two CBP agents asked passengers who had been on Delta Flight 1583 from San Francisco to show their identification while deplaning after landing at JFK Airport at about 8 p.m. Wednesday. The search was conducted at the request of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, CBP said in a statement, but the person they were seeking was not on the flight. Couldn't they have just, you know, there's a manifest. Yeah. (laughs) There's a list of people to get onto these planes. They have to pay for a ticket after all. They have Mm -hmm. to pay for a ticket and those that get on board, the ticket's taken. And so based on the tickets that were actually taken, you know who's on the plane. And you can't, you can't go through the Department of Homeland Security checkpoints without you know, pretty high scrutiny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Wells, a staff attorney with the New York Civil Liberties Union, said that law enforcement officials sometimes board airplanes to apprehend a suspect or a fugitive, but he said it would be unusual for authorities to wait outside an arriving airplane to ask for identification for each passenger. They'll occasionally pull someone off of a flight or officers will come on and make an arrest. It's much more surgical thing than setting up a dragnet. That's what's so alarming is about the way that this played out. It's unclear what would have happened. And to me, this is the important part. Mm -hmm. It's unclear what would have happened had officials found undocumented immigrants getting off the airplane and whether they would have faced deportation if identified. It is also unclear what would have happened to any passenger who refused to produce his or her identification for the agents. Is this a mere request to see identification? Well said. Would they have detained them? Would they have been detained but for them showing ID? Because then it's no longer a consensual encounter and the Constitution enters the equation. Mm. Now, there was uh, a reporter, and I can't remember where they were from, but they were on that flight. And I remember reading their, uh, their take on what had happened. And they said that pretty much the reason why nobody was like, you know, what is this? Um, I I guess a few people, she said, had asked, like, what do you need it for? And they refused to answer. Um, Yeah. But the reason nobody really stood up was she said there was a lot of pressure on all sides to just make this go as quickly as possible. Oh, yeah. This is a high pressure situation. Everyone wants to get off the plane. So you've got all, all the angry citizens behind you that you're mucking up the works. Yeah, of course, but I yeah. I think that's important to mention because I I think if if you do find yourself in a situation like that and you know it's wrong, you might have to fuck up somebody else's day to make a scene. Um, because complacency is yeah, gonna be a problem. The, the, 
the the person who in that situation can actually make a scene and get away with it is a white man. Mm-hmm. Let's just call it for what it is. The one person who can actually get away with this and not have it detrimentally affect them. Mm-hmm. Somebody who can actually turn this, use their privilege for good, and all of a sudden, if they are detained or it, it mishandled in any way, shape, or form, become an overnight celebrity mm-hmm. is a white man. Because if it is anybody who, woman, different skin color, part of any minority who who actually questions authority, causes a stink, and gets into trouble and inconveniences mm-hmm. those people, the the narrative will be that this is a terrible person. Mm-hmm. That will be the narrative, huh. unless it is some white guy of privilege, who some cis white guy, who mm-hmm. who decides to stand up and do this. There is there is going to be some sort of major negative ramification for that person. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with that. Um, I guess my point is to watch out for them picking locations that are going to specifically apply that type of pressure. Oh yeah, this was, this was a going to well thought out aid, encounter. That's going to aid them in doing what they want to do. Yeah, and for people who may be caught in that situation who are not, you know, the able-bodied cis head white man, um, and who are not. Uh, at risk of being deported should they, you know, say anything. I, I think what I'm asking from them is to have the, the awareness of what's going on around you to maybe shut the fuck up and think about other people rather than just, well, I want to get off my flight. Like, well, yeah, but at the same time, I would say that, you know, if you're, no, no, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, because I was thinking if you're going to be the person that's going to, you know, stand their ground and say no, mm-hmm. you want to have as many witnesses as possible. Yeah. Because the news being what it is. Yeah, absolutely. You're already being targeted. You're already behind the eight ball. Right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. So having more people, more people's eyes on you is is merely a protective shroud, whether they like you or not. Mm-hmm. Because people are going to pull out their phones and we're going to get video of it. I don't, uh, uh, sneaky ninja nurse, I don't think that we can invoke Godwin's law here yet about having to show your papers for internal domestic travel. I don't think we can yet. Um, we, we can't. I, since since I'm I'm stepping in for David here, I cannot break Godwin in half over my knee right now. <laughs> not not yet, not yet. Um, I, I I haven't even set up to power lift him. Well, at least you, you've chalked your hands, though. I mean, it, I have chalked <laughs> my hands. I am ready. Yeah, it's but, it's, it's but getting ready. He's yeah. not in my grasp yet. That's right. That's right. It is worth noting that an earlier version of this article identified the immigrant who ordered deported as undocumented because U.S. officials described the person that way on Thursday. Customs and Border Patrol officials clarified on Friday that the immigrant was in the country with proper documentation, but had been ordered deported following criminal convictions. So this was handled improperly. Mm -hmm. It was announced improperly, at least. Um, and I think that the 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 CBP officers themselves might have gotten a little carried away in the Trump fervor to get rid of people. You don't say. I'm I'm just gonna go out on a limb there and say that just maybe these folks had a little bit of uh, power swell to their noggins. Speaking of power swell. <laughs> Let's talk about some brain tumors. Oh, brain tumors. <laughs> that's that's good. That's a Let's very Let's talk about good one. Marla. Marla. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That's great. Brain tumor patient removed from hospital, detained by ICE Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. This article's out on Salon. What can you tell us about it? Uh, well, uh, hey, less this than a week. This is you, Amber. 
Yeah. Less than a week after reports surfaced that an undocumented immigrant in El Paso, Texas, was detained after claiming to be a victim of domestic abuse and receiving a protective order, yet another undocumented immigrant has been rounded up while at her most vulnerable. An undocumented Salvadoran immigrant known only as Sarah was involuntarily taken to Prairie Land Detention Center despite her having a brain tumor, according to a report by The Hill. At the time she was apprehended, Sarah was a patient at... Hugley Hospital in Fort Worth, Texas, and receiving treatment for her illness. Melissa Zuniga, a member of Sarah's legal team, told The Hill she told us they tied her hands and ankles in her condition. She's complaining of a lot of pain. Sarah has been denied the ability to speak with her family and lawyers, despite having received clearance from the hospital and Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, according to The Hill. Sarah's experience is part of what's being described as a glowing, uh, a growing climate of fear among many undocumented immigrants. Undocumented agricultural workers in California have been keeping their children home from school, according to the New York Times. Um, <sighs> and more than a dozen yeah. Latino students have dropped out of a school district in Arizona within the last two weeks. Oh, surprise, surprise. It's Arizona. Uh, New York, Staten Island, uh, day laborers are staying at home. Um, yeah. It's all and fierce. I, I made the mistake of looking at the comment section. Oh, dear. And one of the first comments that comes up is, well, she was receiving health care. It was probably costly. Who was paying for that? I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, people. It's like, I don't know. Maybe she was. Or do you what, know? Um, <laughs> hey, hey, guys. Um. How about we, we all agree to do that, you know, Christian thing mm. that you guys keep saying that you are? I want to I want to point and out something. I, I just, I just want to say, yeah. well, what did Christ do? Oh, yeah, he healed the sick. Mm-hmm. He fed he fed the poor, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was really good about taking care of people. Yeah, that was kind of the message. I think it was a New Testament thing, you know. Whatever you yeah, do the, the gospels, I think to the least of these you do to me. Mm. So what? Whatever you're doing to the poor little Salvadoran lady who has a brain tumor, you're doing to Jesus. Yeah, Kristen says... You think Jesus uh, wants to be, (laughs) you know, zip-tied? I don't think Jesus wants to be (laughs) zip-tied. No, I don't think Jesus does want to be zip-tied. Kristen out in the Facebook chat says that, uh, are we going to have to start hiding immigrant families in our attics? All Anne Frank style. Not yet. Yeah, not... Yet, uh, of course, down here in Florida, we don't have much for attics, so that would not be a good thing. That would not oh, be a good oh. good thing at all. We don't really have basements uh, either because, well, Florida. So yeah. <clears throat> um, I was about to say something, and then I lost it. Okay. Was it? Uh, it. Do you want to talk about yeah, how yeah. you know crops are actually rotting on the vine because there's nobody to actually pick those crops? Uh, well, there's that, just mentioning just that alone. Is is a fun thing, a fun statement. Yeah, this thing is it's just fucking horrific. Oh. All around. I remembered. Okay. So to the to the person out there that thinks, yeah, who was paying for this? You know what? If they're arrested, we are paying for it because that treatment has to continue. Mm-hmm. Because we have to treat all of our inmates humanely. Humane treatment means medical care. So if they were outside of the prison system, the legal system at all, then they were handling it through channels, whatever those channels may be. Insurance. Maybe they were paying it themselves. Maybe they were getting a reduced rate. Maybe the hospital was being charitable. Maybe they were part of a research program. Any number of things that were handling it. But if they are in the prison system at all, we're paying for it. And you know what? With... The, the new easement on private prisons, somebody's making a profit off of it. Right. So there it, you it's go. It's not just treat and it's it's a zero sum thing. Mm-hmm. Somebody's making money off of it and it's money out of our taxes. Yeah. There um, are... A couple other things to note about this story. I went to the Hill article because I knew I had seen some more details, but I wanted to be a hundred percent that I had seen the correct ones. Um, Mm -hmm. She uh, was transferred to Hugley after complaining of severe headaches and collapsing on February 10th. Doctors at the hospital diagnosed her with a brain tumor and told the Daily Beast they would soon perform surgery. She'd been complaining of profuse nosebleeds, long-term memory loss, um, 
but she was Hugo in a really Lee, bad way. Yeah, um, and she was awaiting surgery at the time that she was removed. Um, the hospital as a result, no longer wants to be in charge of her case because they're getting hounded by calls and a potential lawsuit. Yeah, that makes sense. So can we try these ICE agents for murder if she dies? Oh, that uh, case Sarah would be so told beautiful. Z- uh, Zuniga being part of her legal team, Sarah told Zuniga that she was given a CD with her medical records at the hospital and instructed by doctors not to turn them over to ICE. The CD was taken from Sarah upon her return to the detention center. Of course, you're not allowed anything. You're being detained. Give us all your stuff. Can we prosecute those ICE agents for murder? Well, she has to die first. And we're not wishing that she dies. No. No. But knowing how things go here and knowing most of the narratives we've seen so far. Can we try those agents for murder? Well, they're just being good soldiers doing what they're told, so we'd have to sue the people that directed them to do it. Can we try somebody for murder? Yeah, probably. You Good. could you could attempt to. Yeah. It you would could never make them. it to court. You could sue them. And yeah, this is the kind of thing that, well, you know, we got Jeffrey Beauregard's <laughs> Sessions up Whatever there. Whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> Southern Bell Sessions. Yeah. Southern, don't... I don't like anybody who isn't a white Christian landowner. Yeah. Sessions. Yeah. yeah he, he don't care too much for them immigrants. Um, yeah. As the attorney general. So, uh Justice for Sarah. That'd yeah. be nice. So how about uh, how about we continue with our uh, lambasting of uh, the Immigrations and Customs Enforcement? Domestic abuse victim. Yeah. Older, older case. That, yeah, that this was 20. We even heard this in the previous article. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, is that, yes, federal immigration agents... Uh, Last week detained a – now this article was updated on February 17th. Yes. Uh, last week detained a woman in the U.S. illegally just after she received a protective order against an allegedly abusive boyfriend in an El Paso court, county courthouse. Uh, El Paso County Attorney Joanne Bernal said the ICE arrest inside a courthouse was unprecedented and stunning. To my knowledge and others I have spoken to, no one has a recollection of immigration officials acting like this in a courthouse. Uh, As a prosecutor, one of Bernal's duties is to seek and obtain protective orders against domestic violence, stalking, and sexual assault. She said the alleged victim had been brought to the court hearing by an advocate from the Center Against Sexual and Family Violence in El Paso. Bernal said one ICE agent was inside the protective order courtroom. Two more were guarding each exit door, and other agents were staking out the 10th floor or the courthouse building. (laughs) They detained the woman moments after a judge approved the protective order. Oh, at least they waited that long. Bernal said she believes that the woman was set up by her boyfriend who knew the details of her court appearance. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's probably true. So Ice was playing into this abuser's hands and did not care, did not think what's the ethical thing to do. Ethics, folks. Ethics. Probably you know that the, yeah, probably price the only thing reason... I mentioned earlier? The, the these only cu- reason these they agents would, were, uh, were abiding by it. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting the okay, doing the David thing. I'm getting a lot of the righteous fury. You okay, are. yeah, yeah. See, um, see what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> the a, the a, only a, reason they probably so, waited for the uh, for the judgment was so they wouldn't yeah, be in contempt of court. Contempt of court by the judge, which it, yeah, heaven yeah. help you if you interrupt court proceeding because yeah. you will be in contempt. And guess who's going to jail? Yeah. A spokeswoman for ICE. God, that would have been wonderful. <laughs> Leticia, <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Zamaripo said the agents had been tipped off by another law enforcement agency and that the subject had already been deported six times. 
I wonder how true that is. The Isotini is a Mexican times. national identified in a criminal complaint as Irvin Gonzalez. Okay, so this was the abuser. But Bern- Bernal said she can't confirm that Gonzalez is transgender. Oh, no, this is the person who was picked up. Or is it? Ice I- Detainee I- is a Mexican national identified yeah. in a criminal complaint yeah. as Irvin Gonzalez, a.k.a. Yeah. Irvin uh, yeah, Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Said she can't confirm that Gonzalez is transgender. She presented to us as a woman. Oh, wow, this keeps going deeper. Um, yeah, the government released a copy of the complaint including an affidavit in which ICE agents said they approached and arrested Gonzalez outside the courthouse. That's the affidavit. But courthouse surveillance video provided by Bernal appears to show the ICE agents inside the courthouse. They escort a woman identified by Bernal as Gonzalez down the hallway into an elevator and out of the courthouse exit. Mm. Um, Which is probably where they actually take her into custody. Yeah, but she's already Officially. in hand and being escorted. Yeah. yeah. So no, that by by technical legal terms, she was apprehended in the courthouse. The affidavit provided by ICE is a lie and thus mm-hmm. should be prosecuted. Um, at least for a a, a complaint yeah. lodged and those held accountable. Um It's probably oh. though not enough to get anything kicked out. No, you can hope I mean, for a suspension. Yeah, I, you know, I don't think wrongful. I don't think you'll see even that wrongful arrest for being a illegal immigrant. If you are an illegal immigrant, then it's not a wrongful arrest, no matter how they did it. Well, I, I don't not, know that these that's are not necessarily cops. true only because court cases have been thrown out for improper seizure. Yeah, but these are not normal police officers. This is a very particular kind of thing that they're doing. I mean, I'd have to look into it, but I, I yeah. really do want to say that the there there may be some kind of wiggle room here because they violated the procedure that they are lawfully beholden to follow. I hate to interrupt guys, but we got breaking news. Um, Oh no. What, what wonderful gem has, has the world presented to us at this fine late hour car runs into new Orleans crowd. Police say, Oh, breaking news from new Orleans. Um, right now up on CBS news, uh, new Orleans police say the number of people injured after a vehicle crashed into the crowd, watching the crew of Eddie Mion parade in the mid-city section of New Orleans has increased to 28, and a suspect is in custody. Uh, Police Chief Michael Harrison says one person in custody and that he is being investigated for driving while intoxicated. A New Orleans police spokesman told CBS News the incident was not related to terrorism. Now, uh, speaking also for uh, last night slash today, there was a man apprehended in Germany for running through a crowd with a vehicle. Um, Department of Justice confirmed to CBS News that they saw no link to terrorism. Uh, Harrison says that 21 people were hop- hospitalized after the crash with five victims in guarded condition. The ages of those injured range from three years old to 30s. Seven others declined to be hospitalized. Oh, fun. Um, I wonder if this is... Yeah, this this probably is not indicative of any larger issue other than... It's just a, it's a Saturday night. I mean, it, it's um, sad in that way, of course. I wanted, I wanted to, to say... Um, to Kristen on Facebook, she yes. asked, I wonder if ICE has to read people their Miranda rights. No, they do not. Because if they're not citizens, they are not entitled to Miranda rights. Mm-hmm. They are not protected by our Constitution. That's no. why they can detain them and not at- allow them to have access to a lawyer. Yeah. I'm telling you, there's, they're in a different area. They're in a different arena than normal police. 
they don't have to operate on the same level. I mean, sure, they, there's, they there's don't, protections in but, place, but not... Yeah, but what, I, what I'm thinking mm. of particularly is entering the courthouse may cause a problem for them. It may not save her. No, it but may cause a problem for them. The, 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 the problem would be that there was a, an agent in the courtroom... If it's an open court with an, an open viewing... It depends on whether matter. if it was open or not. Right. But the, then the reason why I'm saying if it was open or not is because we are dealing with a domestic abuse case. That's what, that's what I was thinking. Because hmm. sometimes that is sealed for the victim's sake. Mm-hmm. Um, so if it was supposed to be a sealed courtroom and the agent was inside... He is still, that, but he is still a government agent. Therefore, I don't think that he's not a normal citizen either. He's a law enforcement agent. But it doesn't matter if he wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah, but it, other it, law enforcement it, agents can you, be then, there. You know, that's it, that's again, a gray area for for them to. But but at the same time, it, it's it's while while it's really an ethics issue, which I think Andy, you're you're getting across. It's ethics yeah. versus actual law. Yeah. Um. There have been cases where things have been thrown out based upon ethics when it got to a judge. Um, yeah. Now, if a case is pursuant of appeal, usually the ethical argument is thrown out. But in that original case, if it's ju- not by jury, if it's just by judge, sometimes ethics comes down in the ruling. Um, Given we're in 2017 and nothing matters, uh, we're, we're and, seeing and we're, we're seeing in, the judiciary getting really angry. We are, but at, people at, but at the same time, they have to choose their battles really carefully. Fair this, enough, but this is if somebody is lower be, level, they might actually start making an example. Yeah, but this isn't the. You might actually get an activist. Judge. This isn't <laughs> the. This isn't the hill they're going to die on. This is okay. not it. She's doomed. <sighs> I was, I was. Hoping she for is that. doomed. No, there's, there's no if ands, or buts about it. Now, however, Sarah with the brain tumor. If the it's brain tumor doomed, it is going to kill her. It, yeah, she may be doomed by the brain tumor, but not ice. Though but ice prevent. If she was there right. for surgery and ice intervened, right. they just freaking killed her. Yes. That that is manslaughter. That is something that a decent enough lawyer can. If brought to trial, mm-hmm. can convict those people of manslaughter. Yeah, bare minimal. Yeah, and then the lawsuit will then be settled out of court with some plea deal to fast track citizenship, perhaps for somebody that she loves. Unlikely. You know, just It'll... one of those things that would happen. You know, in, in the backroom deals that would keep bad press from surfacing over one of. Uh, Herr Trump's ideas. No, the the settlement would just be straight up money and it would come out of the taxpayers' pockets. Yeah, that's the more likely thing. Yeah, that's you're the more likely. You're not going to get somebody in. You're 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 that that's not a deal that's going to be made. But the deal is high. We're going to settle a court it's, for a a sum, yeah. which is going to come out of the taxpayers' pocketbooks. Yeah, but it it also all depends on how creative the the parties involved really get. And again, it's going to be out of court, so we'll never, ever know anything about it. This may be the last time we hear about it. So it how about them? Is. They're good ideas. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, Kristen says, uh, so, so she's also not protected by HIPAA. Oh, crap. Now that's sticky. That's sticky. I don't know. Huh. Now it sounds like we need to get a lawyer on the show. Okay, with HIPAA, that is all about the patient's privacy for their own information. Um, the fact that she was there is not covered under HIPAA because that is just a whereabouts thing. Yeah. If they went after her because she was having brain tumor surgery and involving her patient records, that would be a problem. 
That would be a HIPAA violation. Yeah, but I don't think that this, I don't think this would involve HIPAA compliancy or anything like that at the time. However, that could be a very good reason why the hospital no longer wishes to treat her. It's like, okay, nope, we have given you your information. It is in your hands. Right now, you, your records are, are your own, and they've, they've removed themselves they've from the data. The... Yeah, they've removed themselves from the data. Just in case there was a violation. there. And also out. a simple court order can open up HIPAA records, health records. I mean, that, those are not, they're protected for your rights, but again, a court of law can open sealed records. They can order records sealed. And they can open yeah. sealed records. So that, um, it would take a few pen strokes, a few calls, and it would be done. And those would be, that, that's a minuscule violation. That's, again, nothing that would, nothing that would actually interpose uh, a, a, a barrier to ICE doing what they did. That's not going to protect you. Now, again, don't take legal advice from a podcast. I do work in the healthcare industry, so I have a little bit of, of knowledge on that and a little bit more training in that. But that doesn't mean that I'm right. Okay? So I, 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 I recuse myself from any expert knowledge on the subject. Please seek a professional. Uh, but as far as my armchair quarterbacking, that's, that's all I've got for you. I don't think that's going to be an issue. It's, it's definitely... If they put the person that is in their care in harm's way, then they are liable for that. So they removed her from care from a potentially life-saving operation. Therefore, if she dies within their care from the thing that she was there to be treated for, then I would seek direct liable. Again, manslaughter charge. Yeah. That's all I can think of. I Again, I'm not an attorney. So there you go. But that was law and order. Do we have... Uh, d did any of the things that surfaced today uh, fall under this segment or just bad ideas? <sighs> Let me think. Going over everything. Uh... Let's see here. The White House correspondence thing? No, that's just a yeah. bad idea. Yeah. Uh, and it's more politics than bad idea. It's, a, it's a, not a bad idea. We just got bad ideas. Okay. We, so got, we'll, we'll, we got bad ideas for days. Okay. We'll, we'll move on to good ideas, and then we'll talk more bad ideas, and then we'll do picks. Okay. So with that, let me uh, let me find a little, uh, little exit music here. Ah, uh, there it is. Ah. Uh basking in the music. Okay. If you've enjoyed what we've done here and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways. You can donate to the show through www.patreon.com slash Radio. That's patreon.com O-R-L-Y-R-A-D-I-O to get early access to full show content and uh, maybe some, some tips and tricks and maybe a recipe or two. Who knows? Uh, you can also make the algorithm work for us by reviewing us on iTunes. That'll boost our ranking and get us in front of more people and help grow the show that way. Also, you can use your words. Tell somebody about us and and how one wonderful the ideas were and that you learned a thing or two and that we actually listen to the people that uh, that communicate with us and of course engage with us directly send us an email message uh, or the social medias or things like that at oh really radio podcast at gmail.com or if you're the more talkative sort how about a phone number 470-222-ORLY that's 6759 it's always ready to take your call or your text and if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention and crisis resources for you or your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time on us. This has been O'Reilly Radio, part of the Random Acts Company. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the music Rocket and Pangea, created by Kevin McLeod of Incomptech.com. We'll see you real soon. Um, yes. I'm sorry, Andy. Uh, I just wanted to to touch on what we were... The reason I was so quiet was because I was looking up yeah. Can ICE walk into a court 
and okay. do what they did. Yes. What do you think? The answer is interesting. Um, Denver is actually uh, dealing with this right now where they're not supposed to. And officials are claiming it's not happening and has never happened. But uh, it's not huh. technically illegal if it is an open court session. Right. That was if what it is talking. not, that is a problem. It may not be um, against the law, but it is against policy. Yeah, that's kind of right. where that goes. Yeah. And they're having, um, it looks like they're they're going to start um, uh, talking about this bill that would hold officials in cities like Denver accountable for crimes committed by undocumented immigrants. Um, what? Holding yeah. the city accountable? Yes. Or the, munici- the municipality would then be at fault for anything that happened by an undocumented city immigrant. Officials. It, it, it's a way to try and bust up sanctuary cities. That's yeah, that, yeah, it's, that's it's a that ploy is. that won't hold up in court, and it's it's evil. Let's and just call for what it is. That is evil. In re- in response to not only that, but um, them having noticed, and this is back on the 16th of February, okay. uh, people having taken video of plain clothes. Um, and I mean, ICE doesn't have a specific uniform, but they're purposely deceptively there um mm-hmm. to try to arrest somebody and they're they're kind of hanging out um right. and they and they took video of it and it's become this huge thing um because officials are still trying to say you know that doesn't happen it's never happened you can't prove that it does but now a video has been released um they're looking at all the different laws and regulations um that they have procedures that interact with immigration law to see if there are any changes that can be made. Hmm. That's going to be a fight. I would think it would be interesting because if I was, if I was the ICE agent, I mean, let's, let's put ourselves in the agent's shoes. Okay. They have been told they have to pick someone up. They're going to be at the courthouse they're going to be, you know, at a domestic vi- violence, domestic abuse, you know, court hearing. So they would go, they would talk to the bailiffs there, and they would say what, what's going on. The bailiff would probably, if they're any good at all, discuss the matter with the judge. Mm-hmm. At which time they would say, okay, fine, sit in the back and let me finish. Yeah, it they're the city is trying to create a bright line preventing communication between probation and ICE as well. Because they said that they've seen them sitting in probation hearings. Oh yeah. wow, yeah. Well they've also um, been grabbing nabbing people when they pick up their kids. Right. Know, at school. Um at the time of the community forum, the city was under pressure from immigrants and their advocates to be more outspoken, to do more to protect this community from aggressive enforcement. That pressure has not abated, but There is now intense pressure from the opposite side, not just locally, but nationally. Fox News host Bill O'Reilly said Hancock has blood on his hands for supporting the policy that allowed uh, Avar Valles to bond out of jail on an auto theft charge in December. Valles is now one of two men charged in the murder of 32-year-old Tim Cruz at an RTD light rail station earlier this month. Um, So, yeah, it's, it's... they're in the middle of the situation where essentially half of them are trying to create more distinct boundaries for ICE to operate in when it comes to um, courts and, and things like that. They're, and they're then, trying to enforce ethics. Right. They're trying. Well, it, it, yeah, in, in a way, but they're also trying boundaries. to put down some like real honest to God protocols for these people because yeah. there aren't many like there's not they don't there hasn't have been a need yeah it well. hasn't well you know they're they're bounty hunters yeah, that's the, the only thing that you know the the look you know the fact that they're not in a uniform the fact that they're just kind of hanging out and hunting people they're mm-hmm. freaking bounty hunters yeah, and, and the thing is, is that I was also reading over some of the, uh, what should you do if they come to your house? What should you do if they come to their work, come to your work? And yeah. apparently a common ICE tactic, which actually is illegal, is that they'll show up with a warrant, but a warrant is, the warrant that they show them is not signed by a judge. The warrant is signed by another ICE official. 
it's that just and they, just to get them to open the door. That, they use it to get into the house, and sometimes they'll show up with warrants that say, you know, we need to. Uh, y- we need to talk to you, but we can't search your home. But the people that they're showing these warrants to don't know that, so they let them in. And then ICE goes, hey, we can search your home, right? Or they don't even ask. They just go ahead and do it, even though they didn't have a warrant to do so. So, I mean, right. they're trying they're trying to put some enforceable boundaries and, in place for ICE. And they um, might be getting might, away uh, with murder almost literally at this point. Yeah. And they might be presenting those to non-English speakers. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, uh, I don't know what that says. Mm-hmm. You know, but and... the one that got me was signed by another ICE official, not by a judge. Oh, yeah, that's illegal on every yeah, every that's, front. That's mm-hmm. cl- clearly illegal. But apparently yeah. it's common. And it is illegal, but what and recourse how do you know? is there really once, it, once it's happened? Yeah, and how do you know? How do you know that that's what they did? Because then how you've do you got... know that's not a judge's signature? Right, and who, do right. you know all the judges? I don't know all the judges that would sign these things. Yeah, that's what they're counting on. Yeah, did it come from a local judge? Did it come from a federal judge? Did it come from, you know, a, a circuit court judge? You don't, I don't know these people. I don't have them in my phone. And they don't right. have to tell you the truth necessarily. No, we're, we're supposed to trust they're the just law enforcement agents. They're to apprehend you. Yeah, they're bounty hunters. Unethical bounty hunters. Yep. Scum. Now, then I, of course, have to say, not all ICE agents are like that. And that's true. It has to be. Please let it be so. However, your brethren in arms are giving you a really bad name, and you need to fix it. Somehow. Yeah. And I mean, what that immediately brings to mind for me is the fact that what we've got going on with, uh, you know, quote unquote, regular law enforcement these days where we're kind of saying the exact same thing. We're saying, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously not all of you are bad. We get that. But the racism, the brutality is systemic and you need to do something about it. Those of you who are screaming from the tops of your lungs that you're good cops, um, But instead, we've got three executive orders signed during Black History Month, of course, giving Mm. the police more power, making attacking a police officer a hate crime, including if you resist arrest. You know, and the entire thing of the only charge you have is resisting arrest. Well, and and that ethical quagmire. Yeah. Like how how can you arrest me for resist? How can you tell me that I'm under arrest for resisting arrest? You know? Yeah. It's like, okay, you've got the whole chicken and egg thing there. Yeah. Yeah. Stop are resisting you, me. You, Stop resisting me. What are you detaining me for? Yeah. Can I go? So while I applaud Denver, and um, I'm sure many other cities I'm, are, are looking into this, uh, Miami probably, uh, among many others, well, I my, think we're going to see some executive up. orders. Miami gave this. up. They're, they're no longer a sanctuary city. Did Miami yeah. give up? Yeah, Miami, really? yeah, Miami rolled over quick. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that was in the news. Um, however, apparently Orlando is uh, debating becoming a sanctuary city. Yeah, Orange I don't, County specifically. I, I honestly I don't, don't think it's going to happen. happen. No, but... Um, the, the, there is a lot of establishment folk within the municipality of Orlando that will keep that from happening. Um, especially while Voldemort and his crew are still holding on to power mm-hmm. at the state level. Yeah. Bondi. Um, no, there's, it's very unlikely if we had a different governor and the house and Senate weren't entirely Republican, mm-hmm. then I'd say maybe. Because yeah, we're, we're again, it's 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 such a red state. It's because Orlando is unique in that it is very heavily immigrant uh, and corporate interests. You've got Orlando. It is in corporate interest to keep those immigrants Ill- you, you've legal, legal or otherwise. Yeah, you've got Orange County, you've got Hillsborough County, you got Miami Dade, and you got Duval. Those are actually pl- Palm Palm Beach County. Is actually a narrow one, and okay, where... so so you got five counties out of all of our counties that run blue. 
Well, Palm Beach is is a flipper. Okay, so they, let's not count them up. then. Four. Yeah. We got four, got four four good counties that are going to run blue, where there are huge population centers. But the way the districts lie, that doesn't matter. No. Because there's way too many counties that run red with lower populations and lower incomes that get the same level of vote that those counties do. And all of a sudden, we have red everyone. So the voting does not work for us in that regard. It does not. Oh. Oh. Um, no, it's... <sighs> That, that's an entire conversation. We should probably get on to good ideas. It is. That's that's you know redistricting and things like that, and, and which yeah. there actually is now math. We have math for for redistricting and getting rid of gerrymandering. I think there is now prob- math. Oh, we've had the math for a little while. No, 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 no. no. Somebody, act- oh, I have to search this. Okay, um, find that and well, let, let's talk about it in good ideas. We'll, we'll yeah, that would be a nice. But yeah, nice I just spot. I just wanted to point out that yeah, it is an eth- ethical issue, but it may possibly also be a rule of law issue. Okay. There may be some ground. Oh, we'll see. We'll I see think it's, it is, it is painfully vague. Yes. <laughs> painfully I agree. vague. Yeah. Painfully vague. That's, that's a, yeah, that's a good title for the show. Let me, let me put that up there. Uh, pain, <laughs> yeah, painfully vague. 